Y'all ready to do the impossible? Now some of you have asked me how I make my end caps and I wanted to share that with you. But unless you want to buy a machine that costs a couple of hundred dollars and you want to learn how to program it and you don't mind getting little plastic bits all over the place, it, it's like snow, <laughs> so it's everywhere. It's not really practical for everyone. So I was trying to figure out an easier way for people to do it. And since they don't have end caps for the downspouts at the home improvement store and I've been looking for a while I found these connectors the only thing is they're open on one end so we just had to figure out a way to close end and I just did it with resin so let's take a quick look at that so as you follow along you're gonna see that this is not really that hard so what's the impossible part well on this date May 6 back in 1954 Roger Bannister broke the four minute mile now before that, it was common held belief that humans couldn't run a mile in less than four minutes. Now May 6, 1954, Roger Bannister ran the mile in three minutes and 59.4 seconds. So now the common held belief that it was not possible was shattered. And in a few months, in just a few months, he was in another race with another guy named John Landy. Now both of them ended up breaking the four minute mile. John Landy was leading right up till the end and there's actually a famous statue where it shows him looking over his shoulder to see Roger Bannister passing him right at the end of the race. But regardless of that, he ran it in less than four minutes too. So what was thought to be impossible within a few months was broken three times, twice by Roger Bannister and once by John Landy. And since then, over 1,600 people have broken the four minute mile. In 1964, a high school kid broke it. And since then, uh, I think between 10 and 12 other high school kids have broken the four minute mile. John Walker of New Zealand broke it 135 times. Steve Scott of the United States broke it 136 times. So what was once thought was impossible just a few decades beforehand was being broke by hundreds of people. Some people broke it over a hundred times. High school kids were breaking it. So once that belief is shattered, then possible becomes possible. Now when I was young and I was a kid a long time ago, and they'd ask you, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I say, I want to change the world. I want to make it a better place. And parents and relatives would pat you on the head and say, that's nice, honey. And, and teachers and mentors who knew better would tell you, you know, that's impossible. You know, keep your nose to the grindstone, study, get a job, you know, do the comfortable thing. You know, that, that it's, it's nice to help other people, but one person can't change the world. But I never stopped wanting to do that. When they told me that, it'd make me mad. I mean, you're a little kid, right? And they tell you one thing and you're like, you know, why? Why is it impossible? You know, why can't people change the world? Well, everybody thought that four minute mile was impossible. And I never quit trying. So all my life, anything that I figured out that could help other people, I shared with them. But you would only reach a handful of people. And out of that handful, one or two people might actually do it. And then the internet came along. And all of a sudden we were connected with people around the world. And just like millions of other people, you know, I got on there and started sharing things with others. And it's helped a lot of people. And that did my heart good. But, but when I first started social media, that's all I saw was that I could take something and I could share it with someone and it might help them. And in the last couple of years, I've seen that grow because it wasn't just me. It was you. See, now the Roger Bannister story, the reason why it tickles me so much was it's not just Roger Bannister doing the impossible, shattering a belief, making it possible for other people. 
There were two other people in that first race on May 6, 1954. Now, a lot of people have heard the name Roger Bannister because he shattered that record. But I'm guessing that not a lot of people have heard of Chris Chataway or Chris Brasher. These are two of the people that were in the race with him. And they set the pace. And they helped him. So besides everyone just being in a race and competing against each other, sometimes we need the help of others. And those two guys set the pace for Roger Bannister and helped him break that four minute mile. That's where it comes down to you guys. You know, I'm just one guy. I can figure something out. I can share it with you and help you. But you guys are just as important as those two people that help Roger Bannister. Now, most people out there without Googling probably would never know who Chris Chataway or Chris Brasher was. But nevertheless, they helped Roger Bannister. They shaped history. They changed the common held belief that no one could run a four minute mile. So all of you out there, you're important. You're just as important. And that's why May 6 tickles me so much is that it shattered the belief on something that was previously thought impossible but it was also a group effort. And uh, even though everyone doesn't know everyone's names and doesn't know the entire story, it still happened. And in the world today, if you ask people if the four minute mile, running a mile in under four minutes is impossible, it's probably no one gonna say no because they've seen it done over and over and over again. So those people shaped history. It's just like all of us. It's just like me, I don't care if anybody knows my name or if anybody knows that I came up with something. All I care is that you've taken the knowledge and it has helped you. And then you took that and shared it with someone else and it's helped them and it's gonna spread like wildfire. It doesn't matter who it gets credited to because how terrible would it be for the universe to give us a tool like the internet and the ability to finally be able to change the world to connect with people all around the globe I mean how tragic would it be for us to let that opportunity slip away so every day when I get a note or DM or an email or something that says thank you they're saying thank you to all of you and that's the universe letting us know we're doing the impossible. So we can't let that opportunity pass by. Now, as far as these impossible, invisible end caps go, is it gonna work? Who knows? So that's the reason why I do a lot of these crazy things and I don't listen when everyone says you can't do something. It keeps me in that mode of always trying something. And just because some people have tried it before and it hasn't worked, you know, just you attempting it might make you think of things in a different way and make you think of something that you never would have thought of before. So these wacky experiments keeps my creative juices flowing and makes things fun. Because let me tell you, when you do figure out something that works and you share it and you help other people, there's no other feeling like that. So let me know if you guys have had any ideas like that where everyone just told you you were crazy and, and it wouldn't work. Let's give it a try. So you guys get out there. Lift and inspire. Keep on growing. Be the change. I'll catch you next time.